Study overseas live. G'day, welcome to Study Overseas Live, episode two. This is the show for university students who are thinking about studying overseas in some way. I'm Rob Malicki and this is... Tash Gahari. It's so good to see you guys. Mm. Today, we're talking all about one of the most important issues, which is money. The seven ways to finance your overseas study adventure. Mm. We've got some good news, haven't we, Tash? There's like, there's free money out there, people. Yeah. And we're gonna tell you exactly how to go and find it. By the end of this video, um, this live stream, or if you are watching it um, uh, on the replay, thank you for joining us again. Um, by the end of this, you're gonna have a really great idea about all of the different sources of funding that are available for you out there. And you're gonna realize that this is very, very achievable, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, absolutely. I, anyone can do it, really. Basically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been working in and around Australian higher education for like 20 years. I personally have been involved in basically setting up some of these funding initiatives that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and cumulatively, I don't know, we've sent thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people on overseas study programs. They were able to make it happen, which means you can make it happen too. Um, yeah. Why is this so important, Tash? Yeah, I think just because um, I guess for a lot of people, money is a big barrier. As we know, money is what makes the world go around. So whether you're um, planning to travel overseas or study overseas, um, you really need to know how you're gonna how you're gonna fund the experience um, because it, sometimes it all does come down to money. But there is good news because there is a lot out there, and it is more achievable than you can think. So um, yeah, stick with us, and we have some great we have some great tips. This is the thing about being live. Just noticed that our microphone wasn't plugged in. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's plug that in. Hopefully give you guys a little bit better audio. The thing, you guys know that this is live. This is not fudged, is it? No, it's we not. didn't set that up. <laughs> that was just a screw up. That was my screw up. <laughs> it's so good there to be go. here. Hey, and because we're here live, we are 100% here for you, which means this is actually your opportunity to Jump on the chat, whether it's right here on YouTube. Um, if you're on Facebook or Instagram up there, hit us up in the comments, guys. That's what we're here for. We're here to answer your questions. We will do that live, unprompted, without a microphone if we need to. Um, we're 100% here for you. Yeah, and I might mention as well is that we've started a Study Overseas live show community um, on Facebook. So um, We've got about 70 people in there already, um, and we've only just started last week. So um, jump in the group, introduce yourself, tell us how you're planning to fund your overseas study adventure, or if you have any tips on how to manage your money while you're over there, and just join in. If you're watching this live, you can actually share this out with other people straight away. Just hit the share button, um, and that will actually notify any friends of yours that are thinking about studying overseas, who are getting prepped. Um, share this information with them, because I think how you fund this uh, is one of the most important things that you can know. So awesome information. Um, yeah, ready to go? Cool. Ready. Where do we start? <laughs> so travel up of the week, and this week we have Kayla Paradiso from AIM Overseas join us again. Hi, Kayla. Hey, Hi, Kayla. Happy Hi. birthday. Oh Thank yeah, you. happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so tell us about what app, uh, travel app, you're going to tell us about today. Yeah, so today I wanted to talk about an app that, well, speaking of budgeting and finances, first off, um, the app this week will assist uh, you with actually two major costs of travelling overseas. So, of course, that's accommodation and meals. Um, so this app's called Workaway. Um, so basically what this app does is it actually allows you to volunteer in the country of your choice in exchange for free accommodation and sometimes depending on your host, um, they'll provide meals to you as well. Mm. So it's a really, yeah, it's a really cool app, this one. That's, um, that's 
sort of similar to the concept. Did you, have you ever heard of woofing? Willing yep. workers on organic farms? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like the same sort of, same sort of concept, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really it's a really cool concept. So basically, what you can do is you can search by destination, um, and you can view all of the opportunities that way. So um, you can even set up your own profile as well, and hosts will contact you dependent on your experience and your suitability for the project that they have. Nice. Um, so, for example, you could be working in a hostel, you could be working on a summer camp. Um, you could be working as a yoga teacher. Really, the opportunities are quite vast in that respect. Awesome. Such a good way to save a whole bunch of money. What a great idea. Yeah. Fantastic. So that's definitely one to download, folks. Awesome. It is, definitely. There is one small thing to remember. There's a small sign-up fee. Uh -huh. <laughs> it does give you 12 months access, though, to the site. Um, and in the, the scheme of things, that is such a small cost if you're saving on accommodation and meals as well. Um, the cost is around $60 Australian. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. But it opens you to a world of opportunities. That's, yeah, and look, it's good to know about that stuff up front. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess, you know, people shouldn't be too confused about having to pay something up front or having to pay something downstream. You know, like with Airbnb, you pay nothing up front. But, yeah. of course, every time you book something, you pay, like, the service fee anyway. So you're going to pay that either up front yeah. or, or downstream because yeah. it's, you know, they've got to build and maintain the app. Mm -hmm. So good That's thing to right. know in advance, though. Yeah. Thanks, Taylor. Great app this week. We great can't fine. wait to see you again next week. See you next week. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. Bye. Awesome. That's such a good app. Yeah, isn't amazing. It? I never knew about it. No. But, yeah. But such a clever way to save money while you're traveling. For example, if you're going on a semester exchange program and you want to save some money, um, yeah, go and like use some of your expertise, do a project, free accommodation, free food. That's pretty amazing. Awesome. Be before we jump into like how to actually get the money, um, maybe we should talk just really quickly about how much people can expect to need when they go off and do an international study experience? That's mm -hmm. one of the most common questions we actually get, isn't it? Yep. Cool. So what are some of the big categories yeah. of things people spend money on? So I guess some of the big categories are flights and accommodation. Yep. Um, and that really depends where you're going overseas as well. Um, obviously, if you're going to America, um, you can get flights that are a little bit cheaper um, than Europe, so to speak. And also, if you're traveling to Asia, a lot cheaper even so. Yeah, totally. So I think if you're going on any kind of program um, to Europe, base cost, I mean, if you get super lucky, you'll get like under $1,800. Uh, I've seen recently airfares as low as like $1,200 return to London. Uh, but like count around $2,000 is a pretty safe point. Mm -hmm. USA, like $1,500 to $2,000, depending on where in the States you're going. Obviously, like this side, East Coast, or West Coast, cheaper. Um, East Coast, more expensive. Mm. Um, Asia... Thousand bucks, twelve hundred dollars to get you pretty much anywhere in Asia. It's a pretty good estimate. Yeah. Um, accommodation. Accommodation is an interesting one, right? Um, you can spend anywhere from probably a couple of hundred dollars per week, uh, right through to like seven or eight hundred dollars a week if you're staying in a fully catered college at a university on an exchange program. So it's sort of like mm. everything in between. Yeah. Always check the detail of, for example, if you're doing a, a program through someone like AIM Overseas or another organisation like that, they might include accommodation for you in the program fee, so you might not have to think about it. If you're doing a study tour, likewise, accommodation is probably included. Um, but Exchange, uh, there's some great resources on the web, and we'll chuck some of those in the show notes yep. if you look up like cost of accommodation. What else? What about food, Tash? Food. Um, I guess it's a bit different with me and my experience in that a lot of my food was included. Yep. I just went on a short, <clears throat> short uh, program. So, um, yeah, a lot of the food was included, so I didn't really have to account for that in my costs. But if you think about how much groceries cost in Australia, how mm. much you pay per person, you'd be looking at probably like $70 yeah. per person a week. Um, and that's being a little bit generous, yeah. I guess, as well. Um, I guess you can always live on tuna and beans and <laughs> grain, even when you're overseas as well. So there is um, ways to cut down your grocery Bill this week, but you do want to make sure that you're leaving enough money to um, go out and enjoy, eat yep. your local foods um, and things like that as well. So my rule of thumb, guys, ten bucks if you're slumming it, ten bucks a day, and if you are wanting to live it up a little bit more, twenty dollars a day in terms of your groceries. That gives you a little bit of money for you to get out and go to restaurants and that sort of stuff as well. Pretty simple rule of thumb. Short term, long term ends up being about the same. Mm. In, in in my view. 
Um, what about other sorts of costs like study materials? Because once again, if you're on a short program study tour, probably most of that stuff is going to be included. Yeah. Semester exchange, probably the same cost as um, studying here in Australia. Uh, you know, a couple of hundred dollars worth of textbooks and the like if they're not doing e-books at the institution that you're going going to. Mm, that's a good thing not to forget as well when you're planning out your budget. Yeah. I know it's something that I would probably skip. You'd think about the big things like flights and accommodation and food, but you wouldn't think about your study materials, so really good thing to budget in. Yeah. And what about, so biggest, almost the hardest question to answer is, um, what about like just other spending money? Like how much should people think about having in terms of other spending money? What's it dependent on? Depends. I think it depends on what your plans are. Are you yep. planning to do some extra travel on weekends or um, before and after your trip? Are you planning on doing um, yeah a little tour outside of that that obviously is a bit, bit more expensive than if you were sharing a hostel with a friend on the weekend? Yeah. Um, so definitely budget in your travel as well and look for cheaper options, um, like staying in hostels, I guess, or camping, yeah. I guess, is a great option in some places as well to really cut down the cost. Yeah. I, uh, I, I would say if you're going away for, um, for each month, between $500 and $1,000 of like general spending money is a good rule of thumb. $500, I mean, that's a lot of money, right? 500 bucks if you're gone for a month, two months, six months, mm -hmm. um, to me is like the minimum that you would want to have saved up in order for you to basically do enough of the stuff that you really want to do, you know, go and do tours. Um, you're not going to jump out of any helicopters with $500 in the kitty for a month. No. <laughs> but once you get up to like $1,000 saved up for a month, there's not a lot of things that you're going to have to turn down if you've got $1,000 of just general spending money outside of like accommodation, food and other stuff. Mm. $500, that's what you want to aim for as a minimum. 1000 bucks, you're going to be pretty comfortable. Yeah, it might be also good to mention um, that you want a bit of money uh, for emergencies. Um, just saved up, just in case. Totally. A little bit of contingency fund, so a couple thousand dollars yeah. for that. How are they going to get this money, Tash? Maybe we should yeah. really talk about what you guys are really here for. <laughs> Let's talk about Money, money, money. All right, how to actually fund your overseas study experience. Number one. Cool. So, OS Help. Um, we put this first because it's one of the best ways to be able to afford to study overseas. So, um, how many people have done it in the past, Rob? Thousands, tens, hundred, hundred, tens of, of thousands? Tens of thousands of people. Yeah. OS Help is the most amazing scheme. It's pretty much unique in the world where you have an opportunity to Borrow, um, at a time of filming, it's around about $7,500 uh, to help you fund an international study experience of any type. As long as that's counting to your course of study in some way, um, you, can, you can borrow that money and pay it off on your hex. Plenty of different conditions, so it's only available for Australian students. It's only available if you are a hex-supported student, so basically you're an Australian government subsidised student. Um, you need to have completed, at time of filming, one full year of study in your Australian degree before you um, go on your program, uh, or before you can receive the funds, sorry. And you need to have a semester, a full semester, full load, full semester of study left to go after you get back. So there's quite a few conditions around that, but the reality is that there's like literally tens of thousands of Australians who take this up. Uh, who have taken it up, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's an amazing option and I think um, most people don't know about it. When I tell people, they're like, I never knew this existed. Yeah. And a lot of people um, don't also know is that you can actually get it twice um, as yes. long as there's six months in between um, the experiences. Uh, I guess it's different at each uni. Yep. Double check that just to make sure. Um, but you can get it twice. A lot of people don't also don't know that. So they come back from a short program or an experience, they wait six months and then they go on an exchange. So you can get two... Um, I was helped twice. Yeah. Um, quick correction, I've just just as Tash was talking there, I just looked up the actual value for 2020 is 6913 six, six dollars mm, And that's gone up every, every, every single year. year. It's it gone indexed. up so far. So Yeah, it keeps going up. Yeah. Um, on top of that, you can also, if you're going to Asia, to Asia Pacific um, region, you can borrow an extra $1,104. On top of... On top of... Yeah. And what's amazing about OS Help, guys, it is like literally the only time in your life you'll get handed money 
um, where you don't have to actually pay interest on it, except maybe from your family if you're lucky enough. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, like, it's the only time that you'll actually get an interest-free loan. It's indexed to inflation. So as, you know, the value of goods goes up, yes, your OS help loan value will also increase that you need to pay back. But there's no interest, which means this is literally the only time in your life you're going to get access to something this freaking good. Yeah, and how it works is that you apply through your, um, through your university and it gets processed through them. And then what happens is that when it's approved, um, the money goes directly into your bank account. So then you can use it for whatever, whatever you want. So you can use it for your flights, for your uh, program fee, accommodation, whatever you need. Yeah. yeah. Once again, guys, like every university has its own specific processes. That includes everything from like how you apply for it, the timeframes related to it. All you have to do is jump on Google um, or your prefer preferred web browser and <laughs> put in um, like the name of your university and OS help. That's it. Uh, and your university's policy will come up because every uni is required to have a published policy. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you exactly everything that you need to know. $6,913, Tash. You can do a lot with that. You can do a lot with that. Mm. Awesome. Great. We're off and running. What's next? Next, the new Colombo plan. Um, also, something that a not a lot of people know about, or I, I would say generally in the general public and students, um, but Rob actually knows quite a lot. He's quite an expert in this space. So, Rob, what is the new Colombo plan? Yeah, I've been lucky enough to be one of the co-architects of the new Colombo plan, so I've been really heavily involved in developing this thing. Um, essentially, the new Colombo plan is the Australian government's uh, main way of getting Australian university students to engage with the Asia-Pacific region. It has two, two, two components to it, so I'll talk about each of them separately. The first is the scholarship program. Um, the scholarship program is worth, for recipients, up to like $60,000. $60,000. It's a lot of money. Um, yeah. It's a fully funded, immersive international study and working experience in the Asia Pacific for up to about 120 students every year. Um, and it basically will fund you to be over in a country in the Indo-Pacific region for up to 19 months, studying the language, working in local companies, um, doing internships, um, studying inside a university. I mean, it's absolutely, by far and away, the most extraordinary scholarship that this country has to offer for Australian university students. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. Um, it's competitive. Before you can even apply for this, you need to be nominated by your university, which means you uh, need to be doing pretty well academically, and you also need to be engaged in other things. Like, it's not good enough just to have good academic marks. You need to be engaged outside of uni in other parts of the community, um, other parts of, like, university life. Uh, if you just, like, search for New Colombo Plan, you'll find a ton of resources. New Colombo Plan and Global Society, you'll find a ton of resources that we've put together all about NCP scholarship program. Right, next is like the mobility program. Mm -hmm. So Australian government, you know, when we designed this um, program, we wanted to have like the elite um, scholarship program, which was really going to train Australia's future leaders and make them um, Indo-Pacific literate and have deep connections with the region. But then it's not kind of good enough just to train 100 people a year. You really need to make sure that everyone, or most students, have access to some sort of opportunity. And that's where the New Colombo Plan Mobility Program comes in. It works slightly differently. Uh, Australian universities apply to the Australian government for funding. So let's say um, one of the Australian universities, Deakin University, wants to take a study tour uh, up to Malaysia. They would apply to the Australian government for a pool of funding. And then once that funding is approved, they would then be able to then offer scholarships to uh, students at Deakin University to undertake that program. And the beautiful thing about um, the mobility program is that universities apply for the most amazing range of opportunities. Yeah. You've got students, what kind of stuff? I mean, internships, um, community development, yeah. summer and winter school programs, semester exchanges throughout the region. It's really broad. Regardless of which Australian university you study at, your institution has New Colombo Plan funding, mobility plan funding, 
to go and do opportunity and you know, undertake some sort of international study in the region, the money is fantastic. You know, short programs, essentially like $2,000 and up. Mm-hmm. Cash guys, like not, you don't have to repay that. Like it's just literally a scholarship. Um, right up to like $7,000 for a student to do a semester exchange program somewhere in like the Indo-Pacific. Like let's face it, I was help, $6,913. Mm. New Colombo plan, $7,000. Dollars. Yeah. Oh, we'll see in, see, see in the next episode, guys. Like, it's all you need to know. <laughs> That's like literally all you need to know. Yeah. Right? And so you'd say that this uh, NCP is very accessible to all students? Yeah. Like, universities really try to make sure they've got a diversity of funding available. Quite often, like they have to choose what they're applying for funding for. So they have to decide if it's semester exchange, short programs, study tours. They have to select disciplines. Um, they have to se- select, yeah, like the, sorry, I said program types, internships, whatever it might be. Mm. So the institution has already decided, your uni has already decided what kind of funding it wants to apply for. All you need to do is to go and talk to your student mobility team, global learning office, whatever it's called at your institution, study overseas and study abroad in exchange, um, global learning, um, go global, like there's a million of them. Go and talk to them and all you have to ask them is what new Colombo plan mobility funding is available? What are those opportunities? Write that down. Great. Op- yeah, action point. Yeah. Any questions, guys? Any questions, comments, anything that you'd, you'd like to... Share with us, you know, if you've got any questions for us, please hit them up in the chat, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, YouTube, and we'll answer them for you live. Uh, we've got any, have we had anything come in? Any questions come in yet? I see a nod from our producer. What did you, you already answered. Oh, I already oh, answered. already answered it. Great. Yes. Woo! <laughs> cool. So we, we Play on. <laughs> Play on. Oh, yeah, that's my, that's my responsibility. <laughs> oh, gosh, here we go. Bear with us one sec, guys. There we go. And play. Right. Scholarships. Scholarships. I love this word. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, free money. Mm. Free money. Um, a lot of people don't know what scholarships are available to them or might think it's too hard, um, the application process is too hard, um, you might be in a, a good position already, so you're like, oh, I'm not, um, you know, low socioeconomic, so I'm not... I shouldn't get a scholarship, but there's actually quite a lot of scholarships out there for you if you if you look for them. Um, so, Rob, what are, where are some of the places that students can look for some scholarships? At the Global Society, we actually created an online um, repository for these, so universities can actually contact us and tell us what scholarships they've got available. And it's all curated in the scholarship library, which you can see there on screen. GlobalSociety.foundation is the URL to go to, and up the top you'll see there's just a tab that says Scholarship Library. And essentially it outlines the various scholarships that Australian universities have available that we've been made aware of. There's probably more. Yeah. Um, but I think we've got there's 10 pages of them, so there must be like well over 100 different scholarships yeah. in there. Um, the Global Society itself also gives scholarships. We have a scholarship round open literally right now, uh, five $1,000, no strings attached, scholarships. And what we wanted to do with these, Tash, was to make them like super open um, and so it's basically based on, like, not on academic performance. What we're looking for is, like, people who um, who are kind of, like, out there sharing experiences already. So if you are on Instagram, you can apply. If you write a blog, if you do videos, if you, um, you know, are engaged in, like, speaking or anything like that where you are already sharing your experience with other students, um, not about overseas study, mm. all you need to do is tell us what you're involved in. That's pretty That's much awesome. it. awesome. So good, yeah. right? Thousand bucks. Yeah, and it's not reliant on, like you said, your academic performance so far. So if you're creative... Go do it. Yeah. Open now. I think it's closing in the next couple of weeks. So you, if you're watching this live, you want to really get on that. Yeah. Pretty and is fast. that for all experiences as yeah. well? Yeah. All, ex- all experience types. It just needs to touch a university overseas in some way. And, sorry, an educational institution. So if you're doing a study tour and you do a guest lecture at a university, that's sufficient. Um, if you're doing an internship overseas, but then you you know do a couple of language classes on the side, that's education, so that would be sufficient. Yeah, a couple of rules around it. Cool. Uni grants. Yeah. Oh, what's I, this? So scholarships. I guess, yeah. 
a bit guess, of overlap. Yeah, a bit of overlap, but um, uni grants, uh, I guess depending on the university, some of them, um, if you're getting credit towards your degree, you'll automatically be considered for a uni grant, depending on how much is available. Um, so up on this screen, we have a little diagram. Do you want to... Um, Talk through it? Yeah. Yeah, what, what you're looking at here is uh, a diagram that shows each of those little dots is an Australian university. And what it's plotted against is on the like the up and down axis, axis um, the y axis, the, there's the number of outbound students from a particular university versus on the like horizontal axis, the left, the x axis, um, is how much money those universities give on average per outbound student. Mm -hmm. Confusing? Maybe. Um, down in the bottom right hand, or left hand corner uh, are all the unions that basically don't give a lot of money. And you can see there's a big clump of them. It's probably about half the Australian universities put in very little of their own money to help Australian university students to have an international study experience. The good news in this though, Tash, is that all of the little dots outside that um, red circle yeah. are universities that are offering somewhere between $500 and $2,000 $2,500 on average, mm. on average, for every one of their outbound students. That's awesome. There's a lot of money on the table. It's a cash, like it's, it's cash scholarship, guys. Like this is not refund the university, repay the uni. It's literally cash yeah. money. Yeah, great way to um, fund your extra travels or... Yeah. Yeah. I was at a university recently where they were talking about their first year, um, first year abroad program. So in first year, it's very hard to get funding. OS Help isn't yet available. Um, New Colombo plan might not be available for you. This institution was basically subsidising by 50% um, students uh, to go and undertake like a, a, a first year study abroad experience. 50% of that experience all in That's awesome. is nuts, right? Yeah. You just got to ask. Yeah. Just got to ask. And what, what, what can you do? You can just go into your... Um international office and just ask the mobility people there. Yeah, check out their websites check to start website. with. Yep. So much information online. So once again, like guys, we, we have this expression inside the Global Society, which is like, just turn over the stones, right? When you're getting a project done, like just keep turning over the stones until everything is done. It's the same with money. Like, yeah. turn over the OS Help stone, turn over the New Colombo Planning <laughs> Grant yeah. stone. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I think just keep looking. Keep looking. All right. Tip number five. Number five. Crowdfunding. Um, yeah, something that some people might not think about is um, asking a little help from your community. Mm. So um, I think it's been made easier now that we have our social media, so Facebook and Instagram and I guess YouTube as well. But we also have some great platforms like um, GoFundMe or Fund My Travel. Um, so really great ways um, that we can ask people to help contribute to your overseas study experiences. Um, yeah, do you have any tips on, on it, Rob? Yeah, I yeah. do. Is this like a Rob's rant? <laughs> yes, it is a Rob's rant about to come. Um, you know, I was at my local IGA, um, if you're not familiar with that, like independent grocery, local grocery shop, right? And I saw up on the wall, they've got a board, you know, just a community pin board, and somebody pinned up there saying the fact that the IGA, the local supermarket, was giving them a $500 grant to go, I can't remember where it was, maybe like Vietnam, somewhere in the Asia Pacific, to do um, like some community development work. Mm -hmm. So it was a mobility experience as a uni student. I remember looking at that going like, wow, this student's gonna get 500 bucks. And essentially um, the, the IGA, the, the local grocery, got this like positive glow from having helped a student have that experience. If you're gonna ask anyone for money, okay? Anyone, your mum, your grandparents, a business like the local IGA, mm. um, the local bank. Uh, your work. Your work. Mm. You're putting up a crowdfunding thing. Don't think about what's in it for you. Mm. Don't think about what's in it for you. They don't care. <laughs> what they care about is what's in it for them, right? If they're going to give you $500, $100, $500, $1,000, what the heck is in it for them? What are they going to get out of it from you going there? It's like, you know, people who climb Everest in those long chains and everyone has their photo at the top, you know, holding up a sponsor's flag. The sponsor gave them the money because they wanted the... Decision point here. Am, <laughs> I, am I allowed to swear on, like, live... So, <laughs> admission, right? Like, I swear from time to time. 
Are we going to do that or are we going to keep this Let's clean? Let's ask our producer. Producer? Keep it classy. Keep it classy. Oh, <laughs> I feel so inauthentic. <laughs> that sponsor wants to, the freaking photo, right? That's what they're giving you the money for, okay? Put yourself in the shoes of the person who's actually going to hand you the cash and think about what is in it for them. Regardless of your experience, if you're going on a semester exchange program to the USA and what you want to do is have an amazing time and live the college lifestyle and you want to go to like, you know, your casual employer where you've been doing some part-time work and you want to be like, hey guys, I'm going to do this exchange and I want to just go and party it up in a college. What are they going to say to you? No. No. <laughs> bugger off. Yeah. But if you can go and say to them, you know what, like I think... It would be really awesome if while I was away, I could um, like do some little selfie videos for you about being on location, um, on my exchange program, talking about something related to your business that you could then use in social media posts, mm. showing how we're a local business, but we actually think globally. And you're going to have that content. I'm going to give it to you for free, except it's going to cost you 500 bucks. <laughs> it's, a, it's something they'll think about, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Hundred percent. Yeah. You know, um, because they're going to get something out of it. Always think about what's in it for them, not just what's in it for you. It's obvious what's in it for you. Yeah, that's a really good tip, Rob. Yeah. Oh, looks like we have a question <laughs> coming in. <laughs> I love this. It's so, so good. What are you like? Awesome. So, um, with OS Help, if I only need to borrow a little bit of money, can I can I borrow just two thousand dollars if I have the rest saved? Great answer, and the answer is yes, you can. Yeah. If you are not looking to borrow the whole amount um, of six thousand nine hundred dollars, um, you can, you can off borrow less. Borrow less, yeah. If you just, um, it's just in the debt form that you fill out with your university, um, right? Yeah. Yep. They, they um, will, you just, you just say how much you want to borrow. They will tell you how much you are able to borrow as a maximum. Mm. Every uni has different rules. Some universities will say, you're doing a short-term program, you can only borrow a certain amount of money for a short-term program. Mm. Others will let you take the whole, whole amount. So you need to look at the details of what your university has in its policy. Um, but then, yeah, if, if you want to borrow less, borrow less. Yeah. My advice, all right, take it or leave it, is if you can borrow the full amount, borrow the full amount. Because once you've borrowed... You can't go back and ask for a top up. Mm. If you only borrow 2K, you cannot go back later and say, oh, geez, I've run 500 short. Can I have a little more? Don't work that way, folks. You've got to borrow everything up front. That's it. Mm. Borrow the full amount because even if you come home, you've got that money left over. Basically, you get online, you go to the tax office because that tax that debt goes to the tax office and you just take that cash out of your bank account. And just chuck it onto your hex debt. Yeah, and it's better to be off. safe. Yeah. Cool. If you're really cunning, take the extra money, stick it in like an interest account, and like then pay off your hex debt. You know what I mean? Like interest rates are terrible right now, so it's probably a bad strategy. Yeah. This is not financial advice. <laughs> Please see your financial advisor. Please see your financial advisor. <laughs> Once you've got the money, you can do something with it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Tip number six is. Youth allowance. Yeah, such a good one. Yeah. So, Rob, tell us a bit about youth allowance. So, youth allowance, if you're considered like an independent young person, um, the Australian government will, uh, oh, there are a million and one conditions for this thing, but mm. um, if you are eligible for youth allowance because you're independent, you might be living away from home, um, you might be living at home but be considered to be independent because you've earned enough money, um, your youth allowance can continue while you're on an overseas study experience. Um, you do need to take care of this in advance. Yes. Super it's not something important. that you can do once you're there, right? It's a headache if you want to try and take care of this stuff in advance. Mm. Because Youth Allowance has so many conditions and you need to be constantly validating like how much you earned and you know you didn't earn too much and are you leaving the country and are you still here, are you going on holiday? Like All that stuff needs to be declared. You want to look into it super early in terms of the process of going for an overseas study experience, but... Um, plenty of students will go off for like, um, I think it's 12 weeks they'll pay you while you're out of the country, uh, up to 12 weeks if you're on a semester exchange program, and they just continue to get their youth allowance every fortnight. Mm. 
amazing, That's right? Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. So yes, your yes, your youth allowance can continue while you're abroad. Yep. So check it out. And our last tip, probably our favourite, other than the OS Health Loan, is to hustle. Hustle, hustle. Hustle. In the words of Gary Vee. Yeah. Hustle. Hustle. <laughs> and um, I guess that counts for when uh, you're planning your trip, um, leading up to your trip, and once you're on your trip as well, depending how long you're overseas for. But definitely before your trip, there's things that you can do to help fund your trip, and that's getting a part-time job. Um, asking your uh, employer for extra hours, um, finding a job that's flexible within your study and new time, like a bar job or um, a cleaning job. or uh, There's lots of opportunities out there. You just need to know where to look and just go out and look for them. Yeah. Like, do you... Yeah. There's two sides to the equation of saving up for overseas study, aren't there? Like, there is the income. Yeah, of course, you've got to go earn some money. But then there's also expenditure, guys. Like, how much money do we waste? I eat, I eat too many donuts. It's terrible. Um, true. It's true, right? It is true. I can attest to that. <laughs> so bad. Um, but but do you need to buy, like, that fifth or sixth or seventh drink on a Friday night? Or is, like, two enough? Um, you know, do you need to go and buy kombucha at $4.50 a bottle? Sorry. That I, just, I, picked... <laughs> I feel personally attacked. <laughs> Hey, you just had a go at me with that. Don't, don't, you can see, see our tendencies here in the office, right? Things that we like. Um, do you need that kombucha, right? The $4.50 kombucha? Or is like, you know, just refilling your water bottle for six months mm. an adequate way to, you know, to, to get by? The main thing with anything like this, guys, is if you're looking to save money, every time you save those bucks, every time you turn down the kombucha, the donut, the whatever, um, make sure that you take that money literally, and put it in your savings account straight away. So it's like, I saved that money, you saved it in your head, you saved it on paper, put it away. And that way it's genuinely saved to your experience. It's not just kind of like notionally I'm saved. saved. Yeah, I'm mm. saving, yeah. Earn money, save money. There's, you, geez, you can do some damage, right? Saving yep. up for stuff just by cutting away those stupid expenses that we all have. Yeah. Yeah. And we know, like, uni students, like, it's, it's a different game for you guys as well. Uh, like, yeah. a lot of people... Are already living really close to the line yeah like don't push yourself into into like hardship um trying to say that way think about how you might be able to go and ask other people for money you'd be amazed how many people will come out of the woodwork to help you when you ask yeah just ask yeah well if you don't ask then you don't, you don't get know. So yeah. Yeah, and it's a good thing to use a combination of all these great seven tips as well. So, um, really take advantage of that OS health loan and get a part time job and hustle and ask people. Um, so, we've got a bunch more tips for you, but we yes. want to give you like a little bit of an insight. You know, we just talked about kombucha and donuts. We want to show you a little bit more behind the scenes about some of the things that we love. And when we come back, we're going to share some more hot advice with you. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's the weekend. There's nobody there. I'll show you. Let's go. Come on, Pixie. Come on, Pixie. Come on, Pixie. Go. There's nobody. Well, we 
we told you in the last episode that we were going to introduce you to Pixie the Office Dog, so there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so now we're going to have our country deep dive. So every week we're going to be diving deep or one country. And joining us today again, we have Jackie Peters. Hi, Jackie. How are you, Jackie? Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell us about the country that you're going to dive deep on today. So this week we'll be deep diving into Italy, which is actually the oh, fourth nice. um, most popular place for Australians to travel to and mm. study in. I was quite surprised at that. I didn't think it would be that high on the list. Nice. Um, yeah, I visited Italy a couple of years ago with my cousin and I mainly stayed to the north, um, but I've heard such amazing things about the south that I'm so excited to go back again and travel around there. We'll start off with the basics today. So transport, SIM cards, and supermarkets, which is like the most important thing I think for each country. So for the public transport, it's quite good. Um, very extensive, like most of Europe, and you have buses, trains, metros, ferries, the small water ferries. But it's a bit different to Australia in that you don't have like the single card. You have to buy a ticket and then you have to validate the ticket. And if you don't validate it, then you could get a fine of up to 50 to 60 euros. So remember that, guys. Good tip. Yeah. Another little tip is that if you're flying into Rome, there is a um, train that takes you to the city centre, but it's double the price. Um, so there is a bus option that's called TerraVision that you might want to try instead if you're on the tight budget. Um, there are four uh, SIM providers over in, well, four main SIM providers over in Italy. Tim, Vodafone, Trey, and Wind. And we'd recommend you guys to go with Tim or Trey because they um, cover most of Italy and some of Europe as well, and it's pretty cheap. But it depends on how you're traveling, how long you're going to go over there for. So, yeah. And um, finally, we've got supermarkets. Again, there are so many options, but you've got Coop and Conad are quite popular ones over there. Cool. Yeah. Did you, have you guys traveled over there before? Not, yeah, so. I, I've, I've done a little bit of travel through through Italy, um, not for study though, but just for sort of general travel. It's such an amazing country, the food, the people, the culture, like it's it's the real deal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What did you do there, Jackie? Um, well, I started in Rome, went down to Napoli and then went up through... Florence and Venice and Milan and I was going to suggest the two main things I loved in my trip going down to Napoli you go and visit Pompeii and Herculaneum which are the mm -hmm. towns that Mount Vesuvius destroyed in the eruption and they're so preserved and it's absolutely amazing to walk around there it's like you're in another world it's so so cool and the second thing if you're traveling in February I would highly recommend going to Venice for the festival of masks People fill the streets, there's confetti everywhere. Ma everyone's wearing a mask or has their face painted. It goes on for about two weeks. And it was one of the best experiences of my travel. So definitely hit that up if you're over there, guys. Really, really good awesome. tips. Ven Venice is just jaw dropping, isn't it? Um, unbelievable. Photos I, I, think, I think more than any other country in Europe, possibly even the world, um, you know, like a lot of countries, you might travel there and there's like a big city that you go to or one sort of big famous -y kind of place. Italy is just like everywhere you go is ridiculous. Mm. Rome, like mind-boggling. Mind Florence, mind-boggling. Venice, mind-boggling. Milan, amazing. You know, the coast, incredible. Mm. The food everywhere, incredible. Um, and as you are saying, Jackie, like so many um, students go there uh, I know a lot of universities, Monash University, for example, has its um, study centre in Prada and literally has hundreds of students go there. Australian Catholic University now has a study centre um, in Italy as well. So tons of options for Australian university students to go and study in English um, in Italy. And of course, the opportunities to go and do summer and winter schools at universities over there, study the language, um, all of that without needing to speak a word of Italian. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why it's such an appealing destination for, for young Australians. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty amazing. I would definitely go back. <laughs> and what would you say, Jackie, are some of the cultural differences between Australia that's and Italy? Question. The top ones that I noticed, first of all, is that in Australia, we don't really smoke. It's not 
it, if we see someone smoking in a public place, we're like, oh, how dare you? But it's <laughs> in Europe and especially in Italy, it's everywhere. So expect to come home smelling like cigarette smoke from a restaurant or if you've gone for a night out or something. You, you get used to it, but it's, yeah, it's a bit different. <laughs> um, another thing is that their customer service is um, kind of a bit, I don't want to say rude, but it's different to how it is in Australia. In Australia, <laughs> in Australia you're greeted with a smile and how can I help you? But in Italy, you just, you're there, you go and, get what you want by yourself and they'll serve you kind of with a frown and want you to leave. Oh, so cool. those couple that I definitely noticed. That's so, so true. Don't I take it personally. Don't take it personally. That's such a good tip actually. I remember just going to like a gelateria in, in, um, in Rome, you know, in the middle and, and it's expecting to be, to buy an ice cream. And this woman like scowled at us <laughs> and like pretty much threw the change back across the, it's, it's really quite a, quite an affronted, way to be served but it's really common just go with it. It just is, yeah go with it the other, the other thing i'd throw in there about um about culture is that um the sense of time in italy and the kind of sense of urgency on getting things done is very very different to here mm -hmm. there's definitely like if you've got to get some paperwork done if you're doing visa stuff or paperwork at a university or anything like that it's a very much just kind of like it'll get done at some point um Things will change so like you might be given a schedule of something you're going to go and do and then everything will change and it's just kind of like the way the Italians roll they just they just roll with it they you know life unra unravels and they just kind of follow the thread um, yeah. and once again it's not necessarily about being disorganized it's just like that's the Italian system of organization bureaucracy which is ridiculously layered so you expect everything to take 20 times longer than it should so when it does, people are just kind of like, oh, well, this is how it is here. So same thing, like, it's a kind of country where you just got to roll, roll with it and just be like, okay, this is a different place. They do things very differently here. Yeah. And it's so worth it. Yeah. And I think you'll come out of it with a lot of um, adaptability skills. Totally. As well and be able to be flexible. <laughs> just relax is the main thing in Italy. It's like, just relax. Things will happen but you're probably going to have to be persistent to get stuff done, you know, whatever that issue might be. Oh, look, it's Pixie. See you again. <laughs> We're just talking about Pixie. What's yeah. she doing out there? She's chasing... She's chasing a bush turkey before. He got away. It's okay. <laughs> Point of clarification for viewers, um, Pixie, the office dog, is very much an office dog. She will never catch anything in her life. She's very slow. She <laughs> likes to um, try and catch lizards. <laughs> Yeah, I think she just wanted to play more than anything. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, thanks for joining us, Jackie, for our deep dive on Italy. We'll catch you no, next we'll week. See you again next week. See you next week, guys. Bye. How good is Jackie? Oh, We're so lucky to have her, aren't we? Jackie. Thank you. Okay. Well, now we want to give you some of our hot tips um, about how to do this money stuff mm. really well. Yeah. So we already gave you seven great ways to be able to fund your trip, but now we're giving you something a little extra. We're giving you something well. extra. Some things you might not think about, really. But before you do, can we ask you for something in reply? Please hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, um, and, and share this. If you know somebody that's going on an overseas study experience, please share this with them. We're here mm. for you, and this only works if you help other people um, to know all this really good information. So please do that for us right now. That'd be great. Tash, tips. Cool, let's jump straight into it. Bonus so, tips. <laughs> number one is keep a really close eye on the exchange rate. Mm, yeah, that's a pretty good tip. That's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess it's good to be in the know. Just um, Last yeah, week, we, last week we, 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 when we were talking about travel apps, and you can find that episode mm -hmm. up, on, um, up on YouTube, Aim Overseas, uh, youtube.com slash aim overseas, uh, the whole episode on travel apps. But we talked about exchange rates a little. Mm -hmm. um, exchange rates fluctuate every day like it's like a yo-yo you don't want to be paying attention to um, currency on a daily basis like that what you want to do is like pull up one of those um, currency apps and like look at a time scale like a two month or three month time scale to see if the currency is trending up or trending down um, because that can help you decide when's the right time to exchange your money um, 
you will always lose on currency exchange. It's just it's just like a fact of the universe. Yeah, and I think where we're situated as well, like Australia, it's not. Yeah, it's not the greatest exactly. currency in the world, is it? But just. But you can minus yeah. your losses by yeah, keeping an eye on it. Keeping an sure eye. You buy at the right time. Exactly. So if you're if you know you're going in like a few months' time, start looking at that trend line on exchange rates. If it's trending up, you know the dollar is getting stronger. Maybe think about holding off. Once again, consult your financial advisor. <laughs> um, if it's on the decline, maybe think about locking in your currency now. Mm. Yeah, really good tip. Great. Tip number two tip number is two. to get an in, uh, what we call it an ISIC card. So international student, somebody else. Identity ISIC. card. Identity card. That's it. Um, so where can you do that? I'm pretty sure you can just look up isic.com.au. Buy them online. Yeah. Yep. Buy them online. You can also get them through STA Travel. STA Travel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So basically, what it does is allow you to access discounts um, anywhere around the world. So I'm pretty sure on the website they have a really good map where you can do is you can zoom into the place you're going and you can see um, what's around in your area. So if you want to go to a movie tonight and I'm in Italy, um, let's see if there's any discounts for it. You can download the app and just scroll into Italy and see, yeah, literally just see what's around you and see um, what discounts you can get. Such an extraordinary, it, it, like some people say they, they didn't get value out of their, their ISIC card, their International Student Identity Card. Um, it's one of those things, if you actually try to use that thing, you will save a fortune. I think they've actually got a deal in there. Um, don't quote me on this, folks, um, but at certainly at one point they had a deal where you got 5% off your groceries at Coles or Woolworths here in Australia mm. through your ISIC card. Um, so insane, right? Like you'd save money on your groceries. I think you had to like use that to get a discount on a gift voucher, which you can then use in store. Does that make sense? Right, yeah, it's a little workaround. A little workaround, but it was actually literally saving money. And for yes. like 30 bucks for an ISIC card, no brainer. Yeah, so not no just brainer. for when you're in overseas, but when you come back or when you're saving for your trip Yeah. as well. So awesome, jump on that, um, get one. Yeah. Really easy way to save money. And just remember to use it. Like as you're planning your trip, You've got to look at that as you're planning your trip so you know where you're going to be saving money. Otherwise, you won't use it and it's 30 bucks burned up for nothing. Yeah. yeah, and that kind of leads into the next one. So our next tip is to just be mindful that every little thing adds up. So Rob was talking before about, do you really need that several, seventh or eighth beer um, on a Friday night or three coffees a day? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, do you really need that? Um, just be mindful of your actions because every little bit counts. <laughs> cut. <laughs> cut 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 those expenses out right yeah. you know do you have netflix and spotify and every other freaking subscription like do you really need that um for the next couple of months while you're saving really easy way to save yeah. such an easy way to save gym memberships gym memberships a big um a big killer yep. in my budget um but yeah there are but you use out. it right i you do use it. i do use it but um a good thing to cut out, and there are cheap options out there. You can download free apps now. You can use YouTube and do workouts at home. Um, equipment from Kmart is very cheap, and you could do home workouts. So there are other options there. Really easy way to cut down, um, especially if you're at F45, which is very expensive. Yes, yeah. <laughs> cut that out. Yeah, and look, other the other other part of overseas travel that ends up costing you a lot of money is basically like the independent travel side of things. So like maybe you can be more reasonable when you're on exchange or if you're doing a short program, you know, while you're actually on the short program university or interning, whatever you're doing. But then once we all like take off to do um, that independent travel, it can really add up fast. Mm. Um, so like planning that stuff out in advance is where you will save a ton of money. If you plan... Um, to use your ISIC card, if you already plan to like do some backpacking, stay in youth hostels, the further out you plan that stuff, you're going to get cheaper airfares, you're going to get cheaper accommodation, you know, tours you can get at a discount. Um, all that stuff is better for you if you do it well in advance. Um, and just as we were saying before, like, I'm, we're over here, aren't we? Whoop. Ask for a di ask for it, <laughs> ask for it. <laughs> where are we? What's going on? Ask for a discount. Like, if you're going to your travel agent and you, you know, um, they've got a tour that you want to do after your exchange program, ask them for a freaking discount. Mm -hmm. um, most places will give you 10% off if you just ask. And if you just kind of do, just, you just kind of do this, like, oh, I'd love to do that. 
it's just a bit expensive. Mm. Do, you think, do you think you might be able to like, get me a little discount on that? Like that, that, that's probably the difference between me doing this or not. And every travel agent who's like on commission, hunkering for like every dollar they can get you to spend, they is going to be like, make it work. of course they are, 10%, no dramas. Because they would rather you spend the money than not. Mm. Ask, just ask. Yeah, and I guess um, a last good tip is to watch our last or our oh, episode yeah. one video because we mentioned so many apps that will so save you possibly hundreds of money to flight, dollars, um, right. yeah, currency exchange, uh, accommodation. That was yeah, awesome. Your mind will be blown. So, um, yeah, jump across and watch uh, episode number one if you want to save hundreds of dollars. Lots of money. Yeah, absolutely lots of money. Remember, guys, any questions or comments, even if you're watching this on the replay, hit us up in the comments and we will absolutely reply to you because we're here to serve you. Um, and please consider subscribing to um, Study Overseas Live because we are here for you. And if you do ring that little bell on YouTube or if you sign up for notifications on Facebook and Instagram, we'll let you know in advance what our next topic is going to be. And that's going to help you in the end. Yeah. We're here for you. Cool. Well, that brings us kind of to the end. Close to the end. Close we do it. have um, someone special that we do want to bring in. Yeah, we, th we thought we wanted to do something called the unsung hero. Yeah. The unsung hero. What's the unsung hero about, Tash? Yeah, so it's basically um, we wanted to recognise uh, people who are in the industry, international education industry, who are just doing awesome work but might not necessarily be recognised. Um, so this person is some, well, do you would yeah. So we, today we, we'd like to acknowledge Brianna Watt from Deakin University. Um, Brianna's been in student mobility for, for many, many years um, and is an absolutely, firstly, superhuman being, but an absolute total student mobility professional, has helped so many students, thousands of students, wow. undertake programming. Um, and she's also done a great job getting great systems and processes in place at Deakin, which is one of Australia's best student mobility programs. Like if you're studying at Deakin, you're super lucky, you've got so many opportunities. So today we'd like to um, give a shout out to Brianna Watt from Deakin University. You are an unsung hero and thank you for everything you do for, for the people who are watching this video. We appreciate it. Well, awesome. that brings us to a close. If you're watching us on YouTube, um, for those of you who are watching us on Instagram and Facebook, hang around because we've got something special for you. And that tells you guys on YouTube Special stuff goes on behind the scenes on Instagram and Facebook. So think about jumping in there next week as well. Mm. So if you're watching on the live stream, it's been great to chat, hasn't it, Tash? Yeah, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we hope that you really got some great value out of this episode. Um, if you do want to watch it, well, I guess if you're watching it right now, you can watch it again. Jump into the Facebook group, so Study Overseas Live community. Um, we'll be uploading this video in the next couple of days. And we'll be also releasing some really great content as well, so um, all designed to help you, you out. Yeah. Remember to share this with somebody that's going on an overseas study program that really helps to spread the word about this amazing thing, which is overseas study, and make sure that everyone is fully prepared for it. So awesome to join you guys, and awesome. we'll see you next we'll see week. See you next week. Study overseas life. Have a great week.